Hey guys, how's it going? Um, it's Empty Chest and Q's Tips, and we're here with another episode of the No XP Show. Today we're going to end our countdown for the VR um, with the last three games on our list. Um, we're going to start off with Until Dawn Rush of Blood. This is a on-rails shooter. It's a horror game, so it's got a lot of jump scares and a lot of little creepy things, but you can use the motion controllers or you can use uh, the DualShock. I'm not exactly sure how the DualShock works because your character has two hands, so I don't know exactly how that works. You probably just replace with one. I don't know a lot about the Until Dawn. I never played the old games, but this game looks like it's going to be fun and the price that it's it's coming out, I think it's going to be accessible and it's good that they put it at a low price because it doesn't look like it's going to be a big game. All in, this does look like one of the top top list games. Like a lot of people seem to be really excited about this. This one that I look more into it and I get more excited to give it a try. I'm really on the fence if I'm going to pick it up day one or just wait a few days after and see what people really have to say about it. But the let's plays that I've seen online right now, it looks interesting, really interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter that it's uh, it's not really a continuation or anything like that of the Until Dawn series. It just kind of uses the name. I guess there is some mention of the main characters and things like that, but it's just... Uh, just using the images, using the name of Until Dawn, just kind of catch everyone's attention. But it's just a rail shooter. And uh, yeah, you're going to want to use the move controllers. It's going to be a lot like the London Heist on the uh, VR worlds. But you're going to be dual wielding your, uh, your guns, your pistols. I guess there's been some issues with the, um, like some lag or something like that with the controls because you can look around with your headset and then you've got two guns going in opposite directions. But I don't know if that's an actual mechanical issue with the game or if that's just like lag with the move controllers or because if depending on the lighting in your room things like that there can be some issues with the camera picking up the move controllers so I don't know how that's gonna work but this game looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun like it is a short game it's only seven levels um, going through different fun houses and haunted houses things like that but it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun I think it's gonna be really easy to sit somebody down and explain the game to them and have them get it right away. It's it's a good use of the fact that you can just sit in one spot. You don't need to move. It kind of controls that for you. So it will supply a good experience for sure and deliver on what it's doing. And I think with the lag on the controllers, I've heard that anytime people use um, a green screen or something that's got like a bright background, it kind of messes with it a little bit. But I think that all comes with um, professional let's plays and things like that, because they do have the big lightings. And, you know, I think that's what's messing it up. Yeah. And that's that's what I've heard. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. I'll, yeah. I'll test that and I will definitely <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely comment yeah I don't think the that. lighting in your living room or your basement I don't think that's going to be a big deal yeah, but, in, the uh, in the hideout that we're living in right <laughs> in our the dungeons kids. the gaming dungeons turn the lights off and shut up <laughs> sit down but yeah yeah, I think this game's going to be um, really really fun to play yeah now, I'm starting to notice a little bit of a trend as we go through this list and as I look at the games that are being released on launch it's, it's a lot of these games don't seem to be big games so like a lot of them are just trying to be um examples of what vr is going to be and like kind of ease people into the vr experience and things like that they're not huge games some of the, a lot of the games are saying that there's kind of like simple gameplay things like that but they're just going for <clears throat> the uh the open world or the uh, vr experience um, giving people idea of what it is to be in VR and things like that and just kind of ease them into it. Yeah, they always emphasize experience. Yeah. I think like the Batman VR game, it, that looks like a really interesting game as well, but it's definitely pushing that it's an experience and not trying to sell it for more than what it is. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not putting a, a curtain over and saying that it's something totally different. It's saying that here's an experience, we're going to put it at a... Uh, reasonable price and we're gonna let people see and play around in the Batman universe and I've heard l nothing but good things about that game and that was when I was on the wall or on the fence and I think I might pick it up at the price that it's it's coming out as you know I'm not gonna lose out if I can get a couple hours out of the game uh, I think I'll be pretty happy with it I feel the same way with uh, 
the rush of blood. If it's a decent price and it's gonna give me more than five hours, I've I've bought games at 60 bucks and beat them in less than five hours. Yeah. So if it's gonna give me that much of play, that's a full game to me, technically. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Yeah, that's true. So our next game is Wayward Sky. Uh, Wayward Sky is uh, a third person platforming game. That it's the only one on our list right now that's doing that kind of uh, direction and and visuals in the game. It looks kind of interesting. It's got a little bit of uh, uh, puzzle mechanics with it. And once in a while you jump back and forth between third person and first person to solve puzzles and stuff. I've heard that this game isn't very hard and it's easy to pick up. I don't know if I'm gonna like it that much. It might be a cool experience to see how that plays out. But I think a third person kind of game is better played on a flat screen because you're not really immersed in something like that. It's not doing anything too crazy for you being distanced from the character. You're you're already detached from the character anyways. So really, how are they gonna immerse you too much in the game when you're like, like that? They'd have to do something really creative to pull that off. Yeah, well, the big thing selling this game is the visual. So I think what they're looking for with the third person view and pulling you away from your character is, um, is they're trying to get you to look at the whole environment that they've built. There's not a lot of storyline to this game. It's kind of just uh, a small snippet that doesn't really t build on the characters too much. But uh, the environments are where it's at. The uh, puzzles and things like that, they're fairly straightforward. You get to go into first person view and turn valves and things like that. I guess there's like a lot of steampunk elements to this game and real cartoon looking. But I think the the reason why it's kind of a simple game is because this one is definitely geared to the younger audience, the, the teenagers and stuff like that that are going to be the, the youngest audience possible for a VR head, headset. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, do, do it with Crash. Give me a Crash Bandicoot, I might play that all the way through. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Some Something us older guys remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so spiral the dragon get my wife playing she loves that. <laughs> yeah um it, it does look interesting uh i don't know how much time the demo would have to really really wow me yeah i'd have to go back to that demo three or four times before even thinking of purchasing this it is what it is it's nice that it's on there because it's the only game that's doing that yeah we'll see like like all these games we'll see <laughs> <laughs> we'll see our last on the list is kind of we're gonna end with a fade because this is not very exciting. Um, There's no bang. <laughs> yeah. Um, within, it's literally um, an interface to run cardboard, Google cardboard videos. I haven't really seen too much on it and anything online. It's it directly links with the Oculus and the Vive, and they're all running the same program. It almost uh, opens up. Uh, a regular desktop format and you can select videos and go through and watch videos it's kind of cool but it better be free like yeah. there's no way you this should just be a free app they'll pump through with their ads and stuff to make their money if that's what they want to do because that's all it is it's just watching some videos and you get a 360 degree view but um i know that's one of the things that causes motion sickness is when you don't get that lean so I, I'm wondering how they're going to do that. This doesn't have me very excited at all. Uh, zero excitement about this. I don't even think I'll even turn this on. No. I've got a Google Cardboard. I've got the little handheld VR with my phone. So what, what would this do better than that? I don't care. Yeah, this is just a streaming service. It's not a game. Uh, I'm probably not going to put any time into this one either. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. within. Okay, so being that this video is um, pretty short, because we've only got the three vi the three games, well, two games and an app, we're going to break down uh, the, the three games that we're both most excited for out of the launch title. So this isn't um, off the demo disc. These are off of the, the actual full list that we have. Um, there's a few lists floating around there. So we took the most solid list just to be verified that this is um, these games are actually going to come out because some lists have larger titles, like way more titles than some lists. So we went with one that kind of seems average across all maps. What are one of your top 
Oh, my number one game for sure is going to be Riggs Mechanized Combat League. I can't wait for that game. I'm so hyped for it. It just looks amazing. And I, like I said, like my problem with a lot of these other games on the de on the demo disc is that they don't, to me, they don't look like full games. They look like they might have just been rushed to meet the VR deadline, things like that. But I mean, the technology has only, only been around for a couple of years, so if they're trying to learn how to make the VR run and things like that. So how big of a game can you really make? But, but Riggs, that's my number one game. Yeah, yeah, Riggs is definitely up on the top of uh, my list. I, I actually just pre-ordered it. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. Uh, it wasn't one of the games that I, I was definitely going to pre-order, but when I went to the store, it seems like a lot of these games are going to be more digital releases, and I wanted to leave the store with something, so that's the game I picked. Um, but the, on the top of my list is Job Simulator. I said this earlier in the video, this game just looks fun. And I've heard from anybody that's actually reviewed the PlayStation VR, um, they're having a blast with it too. So I was 100% correct. It's giving it a good experience. It's nice and fun. It's a goofy game. It's something to play with. And if you break down video games in a box, it's a toy to play with. So if you're having fun with it, it doesn't really need to tell you that much story. I, I'm most excited about Job Simulator for sure. Yeah, there's quite a few, uh, like, I look at this as like a party game. I think there's quite, there, there is quite a few party games like this one coming out. And I think, like, think of when Guitar Hero first came out, like, that was a big thing to a lot of people and people had parties and everything like that. And I think that's what this one, the Job Simulator and the game seem like, that, that are like that are gonna be for everyone. It's going to bring everybody out to play. Yeah, yeah, I definitely plan on doing a bunch of uh, Let's Plays for that one. Yeah. Just because it's so goofy and you, you're going to have so much fun with it. And yeah, it's, sure. it's going to be easy to uh, bring over to a video and have fun with it. So, What's the next one on your list, Q? Uh, you'll probably agree with me. It's going to be Here They Lie, uh, horror game. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. That's going to be a big game. Yeah, that, that was definitely on my... That was the second on my list as well. Yeah, yeah. That's when I went uh, into the store to pre-order. Yeah. I went Job Simulator, I went Here They Lie, and then I went Rigs. Yeah. Um, Here They Lie is another one that uh, everybody that I spoke to isn't sure if it's going to be a hard copy or not, and they wouldn't guarantee that it was, so I didn't pre-order it. But yeah, that game looks fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> seems to be a lot of secrecy about like all the games coming out on vr like rigs like they didn't release a lot of the information until the last couple weeks here before the release and uh which is kind of cool i guess like it's leaving some mystery or anything like that and like everyone's gonna get and like learn something and see something new in the game that they that they haven't seen on ads or in videos and things like that but uh yeah i don't know here they lie is gonna be interesting yeah that's gonna that's gonna gonna be such a good game <laughs> oh, yeah. I, think so. I know it just looks creepy yeah i i know horror is gonna be good and with resident evil yeah you know first quarter of next year yeah. eh, here they lie should itch oh, yeah. that scratch it should show exactly what that game could be oh yeah like we said before in an earlier video horror is gonna run the vr world i think horror games are gonna dominate um so what's the next game on on your list because we both agreed with here they lie uh, it's probably got to be uh, Drive Club VR. Um, I've never really been that big into driving games, but I love driving in the real world. I've raced NASCARs, things like that. I love driving fast every single day. And I think that uh, Drive Club VR is just going to like bring that experience home. Yeah, that, that, that game's going to be fucking good too. But, I might wait to get that just until I get a controller. I, I'll probably end up getting it anyways. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, I really want the steering wheel and one that's got good feedback. I don't yeah. understand why there's not a good feedback controller or a steering wheel out there that's uh, 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. Like why you have to put $300 in for one. Xbox can do it. <laughs> why can't Sony? Well, yeah. Where is this? I remember buying one for 80 bucks that had good force feedback and it ran good. And you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the best unit ever, but I, I might wait. I don't know. I just don't want to ruin it and start playing the game. And then it just, you know, I want that steering. I want the full, full feeling when I start playing that game. Yeah, that's true. If you're looking for the full VR experience, like you've got to have the force speed, force feedback. So, um, the last game I'm going to say, which is kind of a goofy little game, even though I've already given my three, I want to talk about this a little bit is that, uh, 
Sports Bar VR. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's seen this. This game just showed up out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't seen it anywhere. I haven't heard about it. Um, yeah. And then suddenly Sony just puts this out. I guarantee it's going to be really cheap. Um, but it looks fun. Like if you've got know a bunch of people that have VR and can meet up in a space and just goof off and, you know, shoot darts or, or play pool and... Oh, it just looks it just looks like a VR playground yeah. that you can just goof off in and oh, yeah. have fun with your friends. I, th- I think that's cool and that's a great idea for them. That's a wicked wicked idea. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay guys, well that's what we got for today. Uh, tune in next time. Uh, we'll probably be talking about the VR with the VR in our hands. I, I guarantee you we're gonna have it here. We're gonna try to do an unboxing and upload that and give you guys our first impression and actually break down the unit bit by bit and show you exactly what's inside, um, how everything works, where you gotta push and pull and twist these things. If you haven't actually had your hands on them, we're gonna show you what the unit can do uh, on our next on our next episode. But um, if you guys wanna leave a comment down below, um, Tell us what you guys think of uh, the VR games that are coming out. And uh, like always, take her easy.